The greatest artists like Dylan, Picasso, and Newton risked failure. If we want to be great, we gotta risk it too. Steve Jobs. Eating some fusilli, I think it's fusilli pasta with red sauce. There's store bought with some can of tuna in there. Drinking a Corona Sun Brew. Zero alcohol beer. That's good stuff. But, um, yeah, I just got off work at. I also thought 
this is completely on the opposite end of the spectrum, but a black bread job uh, as a, like working at a phone, like a, a phone job basically, you know. Being a sales associate, enjoy selling things. So that might be a cool idea, I guess. Component of the gate promoted, which 
which was weird. Uh, like, but when I guess you could say that I still work half the time with just a friend, Disney agent, checking people in, checking people out, making reservations, but. I mean, now I'm doing night audit. So my skill set has increased. And generally I thought that sucked, basically how it worked. Like, it's not necessarily about like, a harder job. If you want to pay people based on if the job's hard or not, I think probably a dishwasher back in the um, ski hill that I used to work at in Canada would probably be the highest paid guy in the world because that job was your I uh big uh you know like you're on big heavy stacks of dishes the steam hitting you in the face scrubbing gross pots and pans and it's like um well not necessarily gross but chefs burning stuff onto pots and pans you gotta scrub it off and I think that was, you know, so it's, but it's about how skilled you need to be to do the job, the kind of appearance that pay. High tech work with electronics that only, um, that most people can't do. I mean, that's going to pay more. This job that I'm doing right now, I increase my skill set. It's, uh, it's a more high-tech job, and uh, other people could you could train other people to do it, but uh, it would be kind of difficult. Well, I mean, yeah, a lot of people could do it if you train them, but I just thought that I'd increase my skill set. I'll get more money, but let me just pick up that boss off the ground real quick. Sorry, I don't mean to waste your time. Yes, I just did a piece of boss that was on the floor, but it's all right. The floor was clean enough, so. But, uh, yeah. I was gonna talk about it in this video. Well, excuse me. Bourbon on stream. On well, not stream, but pre recorded video, but. Uh, about making big moves and sometimes not worrying so much about the details or losing a bit of money here and there. Like, maybe like I consider in my life, not everybody considers a big move, but when I went to China, that was a big move. I moved there, I taught English. And, uh, I remember I went and I had to get a certain amount of documents together to do that. And, uh, yeah, there's quite a few documents. And that was a lot for me. I'm not a big fan of paperwork and stuff. But I mean, took this. Might have to edit that later. That was really loud and shit, sorry. Um, I'm just moving the plate over to the end of the table there. But, I took this document uh, to this, like, I think they're called a commissioner of O's office. And they, uh, and I first, I took, no, first I took the document. And I think it was my university degree, like, and I got them to, like, stamp it. Or, like, a, no way you call it, like, but it's a seal on it, yeah. They're a seal, and they, like, bunched it. So that the seal appeared on the paper there. And I took that to the commissioner both to get it validated. And they rejected it. They said the seal's not very good. I had to take that back to the commissioner of oaths. And uh, I had to get them to redo it. And the guy's like, the lawyer's like, I've never had somebody to reject my seal before. That's crazy. And, uh,. And really, I think that lady at the commissioner boss was being too picky. I had a valid, whatever document it was, it was definitely valid. It wasn't cheating anybody. 
but it had to be another 40 bucks for something like that, but, but I mean, I wasn't that upset about it because the, the net result of all that was that I was in China where the cost of living was low and my wage was not great but decent, but the cost of living was so goddamn low and the uh, school was paying for my rent. Uh, I had to pay for utilities, but they were like, it was like peanuts, so it was very low cost. <laughs> and I was in a position where I could save money very easily, and I did. And um, so, I just, if you focus on the big picture thing sometimes, I think it can give you the motivation to get through it annoying or difficult situations and to a situation where you're making good money or able to save a lot of money or able to accomplish maybe uh, awesome things. But, yeah, I, uh, man, I, uh, I was, a guy came up to me, I was at the, I went to a nearby city, uh, my day off, like I just got a couple days off, just got off, it's my first day back at work for the weekend, I just, uh, I woke up at 6.30pm on the first day off, and uh, went for, and uh, yeah, kind of felt silly and bad about that, I was like, kind of felt like a waste of a day, but I was able to get a run in. It was my first time running, and uh, and a long time basically, and I got the run in, and then came back, and I think that's I did the live stream. I think when I got back after the run, basically, but uh, my legs were still sore today after that run. That was a couple of days ago already. Um, yeah, but what I was gonna say. Uh, but when, yeah, so I did that, and then when I, on the second day off, I was with my parents, and we went to, uh, I had a doctor's appointment, which I had this doctor that, he is really uh, serious about only wanting to do one task per visit. Like, uh, one time I, I asked him if he could, uh, renew my prescription for my medication and he did that and then I asked him to like do other things he did the, he did the he did another thing for me I forget what it was but the third thing I asked and then I said one more thing and he's like no more things he's not doing he's like no more things I did this for you I did that for you you wanted me to do that for you you make an appointment and like I can see if you rejected me but getting upset and like snapping at me I was like kind of uncalled for but but maybe I, maybe I did ask him to do too many things but yeah he is just, I just but simply I uh my mom made the appointment for me and uh yeah she kind of does that and I can make my own appointments but she just wants to I guess but uh but yeah I use like I wanted him to do like a, a quick medical checkup on me, plus renew my prescription. And he renewed my prescription and I asked him about the medical checkup. Because yeah, I was thinking, my mom said that this time, because I, yeah, I told my mom that he snapped at me the one time. And, uh, but she said this time, like, don't worry because uh, he's going to be able to do two things for you. But, but no, he rejected me on the second thing. and. Yeah, so, um, it just, I kind of like see where he's coming from. He has a, it's a very busy clinic. There were a lot of people in the waiting line, but, uh, yeah, for I'm going to have, probably going to have to go back there. Dealing with digestive issues and stuff, so, but, um, yeah, I'm satisfied. I thought this was going to be a super short video, but it's like 20 minutes already, basically, so, so that's pretty good, man. Yeah, and then nearby, there's a, a beautiful lake nearby and a park, a national park there that by, and 
there's zebra mosses. Uh, they're an invasive species. And they're in the lake, and they, I think they just found some live zebra mussels. And I guess they can just, I don't know the full story actually, but I think you can totally fuck up a lake and just like, they can just spread everywhere. And so unfortunately, there's no watercraft a lot in the lake right now. Because watercraft might have zebra mussels on them, basically. And they were doing inspections on boats last year. They were doing that route, but this year they just completely banned boats. And, and they even banned, I think, the there's a small cruise ship. Quite a small cruise. Like, it's, I don't know, like 50 people can be on there at a time or something like that. But, because the lake, it's just a lake and it's not that big, you know, but, um, but, uh, yeah, they even banned that, and I don't understand why, like, I figure that, because that boat stays in the lake, really, and so I don't know why you can't just, like, inspect the boat once thoroughly, and then, you say, like, okay, we can, or even do, like, regular inspections of it to see if there's any, as long as it's not bouncing around from lake to lake and stuff like that, and, you know what I mean, I, I don't see the problem, but, yeah, I don't know, but it's a shame, because people like that boat, that boat's pretty cool, yeah, but, uh, let me just see, yeah, my parents got me some new shoes from, uh, Valley Village, which is like, I think it, you might have heard of Goodwill, or, but it's like a, where you donate clothes to it, clothing and other items, lamps, and this and that, and they, uh, they sell it for a bit of profit, but at, like, discount prices. So it's used stuff, right? But, uh, my parents got me a pair of used shoes, and, but they're actually quite nice looking. And, uh, I'm not going to show them on this video, but it's, they're quite, yeah, they're, I mean, they're, like, uh, suede, I think. And they're, like, kind of blue and kind of like slippers, but like a little classier and stuff like that, and they have like a decent sole on them. My feet were getting a lot, I stand for like seven and a half hours. Well, no, actually, uh, after tonight I fucked the dog a little bit too, so I didn't stand for like, I was gonna say I stand for seven and a half hours, but I don't really, uh, but yeah, I do a lot of standing at work, so, but my feet got a little bit sore, but um, I'm not sure if I would just be picky, like, um, I'm not sure if that happens with my Adidas sneakers that I have, which are like falling apart, but um, I'm pretty comfortable, but so I'm going to try these shoes out though, and definitely like, I don't have to get self-conscious now, because like my toe was like falling out of the Adidas ones, and I was, I spent a huge amount of time uh, searching on Foot Locker for shoes, but couldn't make up my goddamn mind. It's a first world problem, but there's lots of stuff that I'm trying to buy and right now. I'm trying to, I'm still thinking about buying those external hard drives to back up my YouTube videos so that some crazy son of a bitch hacks into my account that can't delete all my shit and make my revenue drop down to zero or 10 bucks a month or something. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I had my stuff on my, uh, sorry, I, I know I talk about the same stuff again, but uh, I had my stuff, uh, those videos on my computer, I have, like, I have two terabytes of storage on my iMac, but, uh, I run out of, if you make videos, like, one video a week, like, those videos are, like, two gigs, three gigs, four gigs, like, they're big file sizes, these videos, and that adds a quick, believe it or not, and I think if you put them, you upload them like to like Final Cut Pro or editing software, like you get a copy of that on the fucking Final Cut, and then you get a copy of that saved to your folder on your desktop or whatever. Once you see the videos, so it's like you get three gigabytes as the file is like times two, basically. So, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I first sure I was fantasizing about landing, uh, submitting a resignation letter to and just what my life could be like if I quit my job, but, um, I was thinking about it, like, I, 
I was getting my shit together. I was like, well, I can move out on this date and I can just go hardcore on YouTube, maybe make more videos and do this so that I can survive. But I think I could probably survive quite a long time because with my before, I, I, lost, I lost it pretty much a whole winter and then some and a bit of the spring and when I was living in Regina, I was like completely unemployed zero income. I was, I was making YouTube videos. That's when I started my making, no, I started making YouTube videos like 10 years ago, but I did, I was making like fitness videos and stuff like that and other videos and, but, um, I wasn't an ASMR and then I stopped, I just did that for a short period of time and I stopped basically. And, and then a few years, a few years later, I made a couple more videos, but I wasn't serious into it. But like about four years ago, I started making like ASMR, started putting out about a video a week, and um, I forget kind of what I was talking about there. Sorry, but um, but yeah. So, but I mean, okay, yeah. I, w I was gonna say that I wasn't, uh, cause I don't know if you know, but I, on YouTube, like you can't just get monetized from the get-go and start making money you have to get like a thousand you can if you can do it by shorts and you have shorts videos that go fucking viral then you so I've, i'm chucking around the f-bomb a lot in this video but if you have shorts videos that go viral um yeah you can get monetized quickly but, but otherwise like you have to have if you do long form content in which most people like if they watch ASMR, from my experience, yeah, then you need a thousand subscribers and you need 4,000 watch hours. So, before you monetize, before you start making money, so, yeah, I'm sorry, no, I it was actually zero fucking dollars. There it is again, sorry, and then, um, but, yeah, but I so but I had some savings and I basically I wasn't on uh, employment insurance or like I wasn't on welfare or anything like that. But I survived basically the whole winter just on my savings and just <laughs> I was just uh, going for walks every day and I lost weight and uh, and ma making scripts and for YouTube videos and making but a YouTube video every week and this and that so. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, but, but with now that I have the YouTube revenue come in, which is from four to, I won't count, I made 614 a couple days ago for the month of August, but that was because the guy donated like 200 bucks on Super Chat, so sorry if I'm bragging. I know that's okay, like I make nothing compared to some other YouTubers, no doubt. No, but, but I mean, okay, so some guy donated like 200 bucks off Super Chat, American, and um, I think that's why it was like 614. More realistically, my income is like 400 to. Five hundred dollars a month. So, but I mean, like making that income. Like, I did some calculations a while back, and yeah, I could survive a while. But especially, but no, I'd have to definitely uh, go to like a cheaper apartment or like a cheaper uh, living place, though. Like, and then I'd be able to survive because this. Because I'm right now, I'm shelling out like hundred and sixty bucks just for internet, right? So. The place I was living in Regina back way back um, four years ago, um, the internet was included with the room rate, right? and, uh, and it was like seven fifty internet included, seven fifty internet utilities included, and yeah, so per month. And I had my own. Uh, I was in the basement basically, and which I didn't mind at all, and but I had my own kitchen and my own bathroom. 750, I mean, that was pretty fucking awesome, man. But, yeah, uh, now, I was gonna try to talk about how to 
gain weight. Uh, I guess I could, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I can talk about how to gain weight in this one. I can talk about how to lose weight in maybe another, but from my experience, what for gain weight, you want to gain some muscle, kind of work out hard, but we, um, the growth happens when you're not in the gym, when you're resting after your workouts, when sleeping or resting, you need to eat a caloric surplus and eat a lot of protein. And with the surplus, like there's you know, a certain amount of calories that you have to consume to keep your process in your body going, like your blood circulation and you're powering your brain and this and that and, and breathing and that all takes priority. So what you gotta do is like if you it takes 2,000 calories, for instance, to provide, to provide power for all those processes. If you put, eat 2,000 calories, you're not going to have any energy left over to build muscle with. So you need to give your body some, because that's the priority. You can't just, your body's not going to go, let's stop the heart from beating so that we can uh, gain some muscle so that the guy can have big guns and uh, pick up a chick on the beach, maybe. So to pick up that girl he likes, and it's like it's not gonna happen. So obviously, so it's like you give your body some extra energy, and then maybe like a 500 cal. Well, actually, I don't know how much, but a bit of extra energy with calories and protein to rebuild your muscles, and then I can use that extra energy to build muscle. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's how I see it, but let me know if you disagree. Um, but I think that's about all for now, so thanks for watching. Goodbye. Okay,